Today, I'm going to show you a cool new way to glue this top to this back. Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today I've got a new and I think pretty exciting tool to show you for gluing tops to backs. Now this is a, uh, this is like a slightly over quarter inch piece of mildly quilted maple. This is not like Paul Reed Smith kind of quilt maple, but it's going to be a pretty nice chunk of wood. And it's going to go on to this one and a half inch uh, back of, you know, just standard mahogany that's been uh, a weight relieved, semi hollowed out for uh, one of our Challenger model guitars. <clears throat> back in the old days, we've tried lots of different things to, to, uh, to glue tops to backs. And I think we finally landed on something that we really, really like. Uh, and, but before I show you what it is, I'm going to give you some insights into where we came up with the idea. Our friends over at Collings Guitars use a press not unlike this. Here's a picture. So Chris and I decided, well, how's come we can't have something cool like that too? So we uh, went down and bought a, uh, a bearing press and proceeded to modify it a little bit. And I think that this is going to, uh, it's going to make gluing tops to backs extra, extra cool. So, um, uh, since this video is a premiere, you guys can ask me questions uh, during the video or the first time that it, that it plays, and I will do everything that I can to answer all of your questions. But uh, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some glue on the back, and then we're going to stick the top to it, and then into the, the, new, um, the new press that you haven't seen yet, but you will. It's important to point out that the templates that we use and the whole process that we use um, was recently uh, kind of changed fairly radically for the better by using Steve from Maximum Guitar Works templates that he made special for us, for our Challenger um, uh, model. And one of the neat things that, that it offers is it has these indexing pins. If you guys haven't seen um, the numerous videos that we've done on these templates, um, let me just tell you, they have indexing pins. So, <clears throat> The cool thing about that, guys, is that the tops go onto the backs and index off these quarter inch pins here. It's so easy, I can even do it while I'm talking, as long as I'm not chewing gum at the same time. Okay, and so the pins go from one to the other. And that keeps everything from squirming around. So this also works great when you're using the templates to uh, you know, cut your pickup and uh, trim or whatever it is you're doing. So, uh, Maximum Guitar Works, link in the description below. Check them out if you haven't already. All right, let's put some glue on the back and get the top going, and then let's put it in the, uh, the big press that you haven't seen yet, but you will. All right, glue time. All right, guys, we're set up here at the glue table, and um, I've got my back, and I've got a line drawn around where all, everything's gonna go. I've got a couple of index pins here. Okay, the index pins go in the index pin holes and then the top goes on that and, well, it indexes everything. <clears throat> okay, so I got a little glue here. Let's go ahead and put some glue on the body. The, that is to say the back. And we'll, of course, smear that around with a weenie roller because, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a member in good standing Weenie Roller Local 69. I have the shirt to prove it. Do you? Okay. Wow, this Weenie Roller is, is yeah. My, my Weenie Roller operator card might be taken away after this. I have the wrong size, uh, wrong size roller to go with this size weenie, if you will. But because I'm only doing one, I'm like, well, I need to, use, I need to burn this up, you know what I mean? You can probably get that hair out of there, yuck. Okay, all right, that, yeah, that looks pretty good. I always like to put a little more glue that I don't worry about weenie rolling out, just so that I make sure, you know what I mean? I mean, that's probably plenty of glue, but, I believe in being thorough. Now we're going to stick the top down 
and we're gonna put some of these pins in here. We probably should put the pins in first and then stick the top down. That's a good move. All right, so now our top's not going any place. It is indexed to the back. Let's go over to the new press. Okay guys, this is the new, I guess, glue press clamp arrangement. So this is a 20 ton uh, bearing press or shop press and um, we built a bunch of uh, MDF here to shore it up. I'm just gonna jump right in because there's glue setting up on my piece and I will answer your questions as they come in. So, um, ah, the idea is that this whole arrangement goes in here and then you kind of center everything up and start clamping. So and you just need to put enough pressure on here until the glue starts squeezing out all the way around. Which it looks like it is. Well, that's it. <laughs> I don't really quite know what to tell you guys other than uh, that's how it works. Now, one of the cool things about this, if you're doing this, if you're figuring this out in your head as we go, is we could stack a bunch of bodies in here and do them simultaneously. So we could have four or five tops being glued together all at the same time and only have one adjustment. That would be this, <coughs> this arm right here. Uh, and we can squeeze the ever living crap out of it. And um, yeah. So what we have is basically just our standard 20 ton uh, bottle jack in a 20 ton shop press. And Chris and I built some pieces out of MDF that we know are flat. And frankly, they're so heavy, you could probably just put the bodies in there and stack this hunk of MDF on it. And um, uh, that would probably be more than good enough for uh, just to, actually it wouldn't be, wouldn't be quite enough, but add a bunch of pressure from this, um, this jack here. And uh, I think you have a really, really super cool gluing setup, <clears throat> um, just like a lot of companies, including our friends over at Collings, like I showed you a picture. Let me roll in another one right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this sit overnight. We're gonna come back tomorrow and pull, uh, uh, release the pressure. We're not gonna pull the clamps off. We're gonna release the pressure. And we'll take a look at the body. And um, then we'll even run it through the bandsaw so you can see how well this technique works. So, um, yeah, um, I don't know. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, gang, it is the next day, and as you can see, my, uh, my super cool clamp up jig is jig tool press is still clamped up, and uh, we're gonna pull it out of the, the press and uh, let you take a look at it. In fact, um, after we made the uh, film, the first bit of this video, Chris and I decided, why don't we go ahead and cut this out and uh, do a bunch of work to it. And then we thought, why don't we make this the series that you guys have all been asking for, where we just build a challenger over the course of however many videos it takes. And um, since we're doing Sunday uh, premiere videos, this seems like a pretty decent spot to start. Okay, let's see what she looks like. I also want to take you guys through a walk through what this tool is actually like, which we'll do here before um, too long. But here is the body and the top is all glued up and it looks pretty good. So I do want to walk you guys through some of the specifics of this tool because when I looked up online to see if anybody had any information about it, uh, there was none. Like I've shown you guys before, there are pictures from some guitar factories, specifically Collings, where they have something similar with an actual crank instead of a, of, of a, of a jack. But I mean, this is pretty much just a big 20 ton shop press. We got this one from Harbor Freight. You can get them from, you know, wherever you want. And uh, we, we, we did not modify this tool at all uh, yet. So you can see the little, the little pressy dingus thing is there. And uh, all we did was we added some, some of these MDF blocks. So 
Uh, this top one we drill the hole in so that the, uh, the pressy dingus would have somewhere to go. Boy, this pressed this MDF right down <laughs> and squished the heck out of it right through here. I think I'd like to see if we could get um, either like a granite block or something, uh, something like that that's maybe a little more rugged than MDF, but MDF is nice and flat. Um, however, there are some guys down the down the, uh, the road from us who have a granite supply and uh, they're, they're pretty cool about it. So anyway, um, as you can see, we just have a flat piece here that, um, yeah, you can see, man, you can actually see, guys, where the, um, where the wood, you can see that line? There's actually a little line right there where the, the, the body blank was. So, and then you can even see a little bit of an indentation right here where the um, uh, this this bar actually presses on the MDF. So um, yeah, so this is this is good to go. The nice thing about this, of course, is it's flat. So if you guys want to make one in your shop, really, uh, you can you can just buy the press and then you know you can use MDF or whatever you want. And as long as it's flat and as long as your pieces are flat, you'll be good to go. Okay, let's jump in and see what we're going to do with this body next. All right, so I'm at the bandsaw and I've got my body blank ready to cut out. Now remember, we're using Steve's templates, which we're gonna use more of here in the next couple of minutes, but um, I've already got my, uh, my holes drilled because they were drilled before I clamped it up and I just popped the pins out, the indexing pins. We're ready to cut this out and then we'll go over to the shaper and we'll go to the pin router and we'll make some moves. So guys, I want you to see, look how good this looks all the way around. This is terrifical. So proof of concept on the, um, the shop press, big thumbs up. We're gonna go over to the shaper right now and it's gonna look even better here in a moment. Okay, so you guys know what's up with the shaper. It's got a great big cutting head here and we're gonna buzz all this excess off. And because we're using Steve's templates, um, everything is able to just sort of index off these, these indexing holes. Steve calls them off-body alignment holes because, well, they align the guitar and they're off the body. So the cool thing about this is I can go from one template to the other. I can work off the top or I can work off the back. It doesn't matter. All right, so as you guys can see, we got most of this with the shaper, and we're just gonna clean up some of this, uh, the, the cutaway here on the pin router, and because we can do a bunch of steps at the same time with Steve's template sets, we're going to go ahead and do more than one thing. So, 
We're gonna, we're gonna clean up the, the outside, we're gonna clean up the, um, the cutaway, and I thought we would also put the uh, control cavity cutouts as well as the trim cutout, because this guitar is getting a trim. So um, we'll just go ahead and do all of that while this template is on here, and um, you can see how fast it's gonna be. For those of you who have not seen me use the pin router, you'll be like, well, hey, your template's upside down. Remember, the template is actually going to ride on the bottom of the guitar. <laughs> and the pin for my pin router is going to ride on the template down here. So um, you'll see. First thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up the outline, then we're going to route for the uh, control cavities and the uh, trim cavity. And since I'm already covered with man glitter, now's a good time to go ahead and put our control cavity cover recess uh, cuts in there. So we're going to just swap this template. <clears throat> for this one. See how easy that is, you guys? And since we're putting the trim on this, we might as well go ahead and swap templates again and do our trim cavity. And since this guitar is getting the neck and since the template's gonna be on there, well, hell, we might as well do that too.
Okay, last but not least, we have to put our rear template back on so that we can relieve this area here where the trim is, that's probably my mask is in the way, where the trim is going to ride. We need to go back all the way down to the make, plus a little bit. All right, so we got the top glued on, we got the body cut out, we got the trim cavity routed, and we got our, uh, uh, our control cavities routed. Now, all of the Challenger guitars, I don't know if you guys can see this, but they are hollow. See, so there is a, there's a one inch hollow cavity all the way around here. So that's the only thing I didn't show you on this one, but to be, I didn't really know we were gonna do this. We thought we were just gonna show you guys the new um, uh, glue press, but uh, it seemed like a good idea to go ahead and, and include this Challenger build too. So, I don't know, why not? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Um, let me know what you think this guitar should, should be when it's all grown up. I mean, obviously it's gonna be a Challenger, but um, I'm thinking two humbuckers because I think that will go really well with a hip shot trim. Super cool. Um, but uh, I would like to know what you guys think. And I would like to know what you guys think of the new um, glue press too. So if you have any questions about what we did in today's video, the new glue press, the pin router, the Challenger guitar, if you'd like to buy this guitar, leave it in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer you as best as I possibly can. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, why don't you do so and you won't miss a single one of these, uh, one of these videos. Uh, give me the thumbs up too if you like this kind of stuff um, because that helps us too for you know algorithmic purposes, whatever that means. I can't even spell algorithmic, but you know, I are one. Um, <laughs> so, um, and if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even for a buck a month, uh, uh, it helps us bring you guys neat stuff like this. Additionally, all the videos that we do in 2022 um, are going to be Patreon inspired. So if you are a Patreon member and you want to have us do a video about a topic that you think would be cool, um, that's the only way that we're going to do custom videos. Um, so I have a list of, of, of Patreon ideas for videos. Those will be coming very, very soon. So sign up at Patreon and uh, get your video idea in. We'll probably do that video too. All right, guys, until next time, part two, I guess. This is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. Thanks for watching, y'all. We'll see you next time.